everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Ozarks Live. Good to see you again. What's got, going on? I got something for you. What you got? Ready? Oh, it didn't turn down on the chip on down <laughs> in the lake that they call Gitchigumi. She's been kind of obsessing like this today because, uh, what was it, Tuesday was the anniversary of the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald yeah. on Lake Superior. And you, you say when, when you were younger, when that song would play, it would just kind of creep you out all the it time. It still creeps me out. I. <laughs> So you remember that song? I mean, now I was a little girl when the song came out, yeah. right? And seventy-two, I think. It, it was like yeah, nineteen seventy-two-ish or something like that. And I remember this time of year, and I would hear that song on the radio, and it would scare me so badly. Talking about the shipwreck and the people on the ship, and the weather got bad, and they couldn't get back, and and there, there's a there's a point in the song where. Someone says, "Guys, it's been nice to know you," yeah. or something, because water was coming in. Been good to know you. Yeah, yeah, been good to know you. So I today was reading something in USA Today, and I, I promise you, I did not know that that wreck happened in my lifetime. I thought, as a little girl, you know, this song, this wreck happened, you know, back yeah. in the 1800s or something. Some I don't know. Spanish I never. Spanish galleon. Yeah, or something. like I never paid yeah, any real no. attention to the time. I was too young, and. I promise you, I didn't realize that had happened only like the year before. And Gordon Lightfoot is the artist right. and the singer. And I couldn't have told you that for sure. I mean, I remember the song. I just couldn't have told you who sang it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that had happened a year prior. It would have been scarier for me if I'd have known that. Yeah, you well, know? I mean, it was, it was one of, it's kind of a drone song. Um, um, it's, and it gets into you. And then when you find out about it, no one survived the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. I guess it was the largest ore carrier on the Great Lakes, and it's still the largest one, I believe, that has sunk in the Great Lakes. So yeah, it's it's a. a if big you don't story. know the song, listen back to it. It is a very foreboding song. But when you're little, you just want to pull the covers over your head and go, "I don't want to hear this right now. I can't handle it." it yeah, just, you don't oh. have to listen to much of it to realize nothing's good. Nothing good's going to happen. No, it's just spooky. Yeah, anyway, so that's just quickly. been on my mind all day. Gosh. Yeah. Anyway, all right, <laughs> we have a full show for you guys today. Archie from Archie's Italian Eatery is here, and you know, he never shows up empty-handed. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm on his side. Yeah. Plus, Chris the Critic gives us the latest on the greatest on what's hitting the silver screen. You know it, and not to mention our friends from Victory Mission are here, and they have something for the holidays. Plus, we have another furry friend from the Humane Society as well as a new show for you guys to add to your watch list. Yeah, a show that I need to get up to speed on. But before we get to that, we're going to show you what is on our radar. Okay. All right, got something for you that's kind of noteworthy, in my opinion. Prince Charles is heir to the British throne, but did you also know he is in the fashion design biz? No, I had no idea. Neither did I. He sort of is, anyway. Oh. All right, so. He has launched something called the Princess Foundation. Now, this was back in 1986, and he did this to support mostly Scotland's heritage traditions, things like the signature knitwear and the tartans to the horticulture, things like that. Uh. All right, well, fast forward to today. Prince Charles tells Vogue he just hates to throw anything away, clothing in particular. He says he just can't bear waste, and he will patch clothing if necessary rather than abandon it, okay? So he is partnered with Ukes and net a portes CEO, Frederico Marchetti, for a fashion collaboration. Hmm. All right, they brought in a handful of artisans and students. They brought them all together to design and manufacture a sustainable fashion collection. Here's the thing. They aim to maintain this craftsmanship and all the heritage behind it and design some timeless clothing that will last and last and last. Now, the small batch collection was crafted to a large degree by hand, the coat on the left that the guy is wearing, yeah. I really, really want that coat. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll look for it today. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But they say they will, the, the, the collaboration will continue to help support the designers and the craftsmanship so that the time honored traditions will continue. And they say they hope this will be a blueprint for the fashion industry so there will be less waste. So the coat on the left, I love it. It's a tan overcoat, mm -hmm. it's belted, it has this beautiful stitching in the back. Looked it up today. 
Seventeen hundred dollars. I was going to say probably fifteen. Yeah. yeah, you knew it was going to be a lot. Now yeah. it's well made. It should like last, you know, well past my lifetime. The kids can keep wearing it. That's I guess. Cool. Anyway, they were like literally sold out, except for some really really small sizes. So it's kind of going over well. Oh, but well. I had no idea Prince There'll Charles had it in it. Any day now. Don't you know? Yeah, okay. I hope so. Now it's <laughs> happened again, against all odds. And it happened in the same country. You remember the restoration of the 19th century painting of Jesus that was so bad, the work has been nicknamed Monkey Christ? Yeah. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, take a look. They're, they're the, the original <laughs> on the left and the restoration on the right. Well, after that, you would think that, you know, sort of thing couldn't happen again, and especially not in the same country. Well, think again. The 1923 sculpture of a woman which adorns a bank in a small city in northern Spain is now being called the potato head of Palencia. <laughs> yes, there she is. Okay, the sculpture which originally depicted a lady smiling next to livestock now has a melty looking face with like cartoonish eyes, puckered lips, and, and a really goofy nose. And in what might be the understatement of the year, Spain's professional association of restorers and conservatives said, it's not a professional restoration. You think? <laughs> There's the difference, right? What? There. Who? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> and interestingly enough, these aren't the only examples of Spanish restoration gone bad. Last year, a patch-up left a 500-year-old statue of a Spanish soldier looking a little more sheepish than brave warrior. <laughs> and earlier this year, the cleaning of a copy of Bartolome Esteban Morito's painting, The Immaculate Conception of Los Venerables, may have taken a little away from the artist's intent on the left there. <laughs> okay, in their defense, they did use a professional furniture restorer for that last one and like missed it by that much. So I could have done better than that. Yes, you could. And I don't do that. You know the, the old thing about you go to an art museum and you go, my kid could do that. My kid could do those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yours could, yes. I mean, you're just turning into something completely different. I don't get that at all. Somebody got scammed somewhere. You think? Good golly. All right, coming up, Archie is here, and he brought some delicious, authentic, real, crafted, handcrafted dishes for yeah, us yeah, to try. Yeah, and it's going to be good, so don't go away. Ozarks Live is just getting started. He doesn't